I mean, that's a great tip. I mean, what, what, what other things can they look for to, to, to spot a fake? Ah, well, you can always tell if it's uh, electroplated gilding or mercury gilding by turning it upside down. Okay. Because they never, ever wasted gold on the inside edges. If it's electroplated, you can't. It all has to be gilded. So the inside edges are all gold. Ah, okay. It's so the underneath will always... Because what... they never did it with uh, mercury gilding. It was too wasteful, too expensive. Okay. So... So, so really, if, you, if you're going to buy anything of any value, please get it checked out. Okay. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Where would you get it checked out, obviously? Robert most, McMillan? But. Ro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most good auctioneers, but the more practical watch clock repairers that you can find in the high street. Okay. Um, and can you just go, go to them with a few photographs to start with? Just to, you know, they... You can. can depends, obviously, on the different person. Uh, yes, it depends on the expertise. Um, but you've really got to look at it in person. I mean, who's going to make an investment without proper due diligence? Yeah, of course. But, I mean, the, one of the things you do have to look out for, unfortunately, as with paintings, there's a lot of stolen stuff. So only buy from a reputable dealer. Okay. Proper receipt. And never take cheap for cash deals. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll always come back and uh, bite on the bottom. Yeah. And these are so, such individual clocks as well. They so are. They, they would be known as well. Very if, much so. You can trace them through. I mean, how, how, often do, how often do clocks need servicing? If you've just got, let's just say you've got a, a nice little French clock or, yes. a, or a general long case yep. clock or, a, you know, a, how often would you suggest well, you, them to, yeah. to get serviced? You've mentioned two, the two clocks there of the opposite ends of the spectrum. A long case clock needs fresh oil every five years okay. and cleaned every ten. These little fine French ones, and they go even finer than this, and they, they definitely need... Um, a little drop of oil every two and a half years, um, particularly in modern houses where they've got central heating. It really dries them out. Yeah. And then cleaned every five. All the clocks I sell, I've got a, 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 quite a good idea with it, in that they're guaranteed for life of the purchaser who buys them. Wow, okay. Well, that, that's something to look at. Yeah. But clocks, obviously, the mass produce. I mean, there, there's lots of different types of, of, let's just say we're looking for um, mantle clocks, for yes. instance. There's lots of different types there. I, I mean, I sell through my auction. We have the slate clocks, the Victorian yes. slate clocks. They're mass produced. They're they actually, are. the value of those in the last 10 years have gone down to, you can pick them up for 30, 40 pounds now. Yes, They've got a slight can, chip yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But they have a look and they work. And they do. So, so if you and enjoy clocks. And incredibly good. good quality movements, the black slate ones, if they're French. Okay. They come in two types. Because they're actually Belgium slate. They was all quarried in the Ardennes region. Tell me about movements, though. I mean, how, what was the, the movements? Uh, they was they were made nearly all in Paris. Uh, there were four or five very large manufacturers, and they would make ooh, ten or twenty thousand clocks a year. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean they were phenomenal. It, I mean, people talk about um, a production line being invented by Henry Ford. Rubbish. Hundred years before him, the French were making it in production lines. And shipped them all over the world. I mean, that's shipped one of their big exports, wasn't it? Shipped them all over the world, definitely. Uh, and you would, if you were a, a furniture manufacturer, these were a little bit before that because they're too that's old. That's 28 that. a day, isn't it? At 10,000. So well, I mean, it'd be a lot more than yeah. that, actually. Oh, really? I mean, I'm guessing the numbers. I mean, it, it was phenomenal. I mean, you, you find. So mainly made in Paris? Oh. Yeah, okay. All made in Paris. I mean, they had people just making one particular screw, one type of screw, and then another guy would make. Well, yeah, how many you could make in a day? Mm. You'd get good at it, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> slightly stir crazy, but yeah, you, you get yeah. It. yeah. I mean, they got the mass production techniques off to a fine degree. So, if you, I mean, if you're looking at, let's just say you're start, you want to start to collect clocks. Yes. Let's just say. I mean, are there any areas that are sort of underpriced in the market at the moment that you would suggest that it would be a good investment for the for the um, for the viewer to sort of for the viewer to look? Yes. As long as you bear in mind a couple of golden rules. Yeah. If it's ugly, nobody is ever going to like it. Okay, of course. That's one of the reasons it's cheap. Uh, and I would never recommend anybody to buy anything made in America. Okay. <laughs> because they were all very cheaply mass produced, stamped right. out. Okay. And the, the, I mean, often they're not worth repairing even today. So 
So, so they're not they're going to be worth even less than 50 years. So if you want to start, basically years. always take advice before... Take before, advice, yeah. but you were talking about the black slate ones. You can get elegant ones of those, which look very doer and very cheap. And the, But the quality you are buying is very, very good. I mean, they're so cheap. I mean, They are. They, they, we put them in groups of three or four sometimes yeah. for £100. Yes, you know, and perfect st starter. Okay. And you think that will go up in value in time? It's got to. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to. Have people. you got have you got a favourite story about buying or selling a clock or, or finding a clock surprisingly or anything like that for the year? Um, putting on the spot here, Robert. Putting, putting on, on the spot. spot. One of the stories that took me the longest to buy was another Empire clock. It was made a little bit before. It was made in about eighteen hundred, but five years before this. And the clock was made was commissioned by the provincial government to give to the American ambassador. And his name was um, Thomas Mann, you know, the author. Yeah. And it is um, Samuel Johnson coined the phrase um, the "Goddess Columbia," which was the embodiment of the British colonies in in the Americas. That's where the term comes from. And there were several paintings of Columbia. And in her hand, she has the the cup of succor, which she is feeding to the eagle of the New Republic. And there's several paintings of this. The French commissioned this clock, and there she is. She's standing in her full glory, Athene and goddess, but she is Columbia. The only, uh, yeah, Johnson. So she's holding the cup, and next to her is the column of Zeus, and on the column is his shield and emblems of Zeus, which is the um, thunderbolt and lightning. And there she is offering the succor, because, as we know, the French were paying for the civil war against England, in 20,000 gold leaves a month. That's how they funded the American Revolution. Oh, wow. So they gave him this clock. And that took me about five years to buy. Yeah, yeah the person who owned it was a descendant of the housekeeper who kept house for Thomas Mann. And when he abandoned Paris and ran off back to France, he left all his possessions behind. And she kept it all together. And then it went down the family, and down the family door. It had a little bit of damage, all been done now. You, you've still got that clock? Oh yeah, I'm not losing that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a problem when you're a collector as well. When you deal clocks and stuff, you find the clocks you want, you're gonna keep them, aren't you? So, you, I mean, if you, ha if you had to put a value on that clock, what would, you, what would it be? I don't know. Really? I don't know, with such a provenance. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone would be frightened to get that one. Ballpark figure for the viewers. I don't. Isn't it? Okay. I don't know. It's very expensive. Yeah, but I mean, I mean that, and I would, I would go back because I used to do restorations when I had the shop, and since I retired, it's a lot better. But um, and I would go to Paris, see all the dealers, and go and visit this guy who had the clock, and we'd have a coffee, and I'd say, mm, interested in selling that clock? No, Robert, no, no, no. Okay, I'll see you next year. And this went on oh, and on, on and on. on, and we had other deals. I bought other clocks from him sold other clocks, uh, repaired clocks, and then one day he said, I'm, I'm getting old. He said, oh. And you're like, yay. I said, I want you to think about it, because you've got to be careful with old people. Of course. I said, I want you to talk to your son and your daughter, check. Make sure they're happy, because you don't sure want to buy a clock everybody's, with bad, with, yeah, otherwise everybody's it's got a bad spirit happy. in it as well. Don't, don't need any of that. Yeah. Anyway, and I left it about three months, went back and saw him again, I said, have you talked to him? Yes. I said, do you mind if I ring her? He said, no, 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 it's fine. I just told her who I was. She said, yeah, 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 we talked to Papa about that. Fantastic. And, uh, yes. <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> but this is your favourite clock? Um, this is the finest quality. Actually, it's not, no. But this is one of my favourites. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking about other ones I've got. So when people are collecting clocks, I mean, yes. obviously this is beyond most people, you know, yes. that, that are gonna that are gonna collect clocks. Yes. What, what what would you suggest for them? All right, we've talked about Victorian slate clocks, yeah. a good starting point if you're into clocks, but then and then you can learn about clocks and then move forward from there. Yes. But what is quite hard to get hold of? Something for a viewer to keep an eye on if they're going to auctions or they're looking in fairs and so forth. Yep. What would be what would be a good thing for them to look? You know, a few pointers. For the viewer to, yes. to to look for and then 
Fine, because I always say to people when I'm, a, you know, I know a little bit about a lot. Yeah. You know, I deal with, I'm a valuer, I deal with a lot of things. I, I can tell quality yep. and then I can do the research on, on yes. the piece and that's how I, that's how I yeah. work. But for, for, for anybody who wants to get into the antique game, I always tell them to specialise in something that gives them passion yeah. and, and focus on a, on a certain area, like yeah. corkscrews or yep. whatever it may be. And then you can build up a knowledge of that. And then when you are going out and you're looking and, and then... Other people won't spot it because you've been done done some homework on that particular part, and then you can grow. But I mean, yeah. as a starter, yeah, I would uh, if I was a um, member of the public and I didn't know much about it, I would buy a carriage clock, okay, because there it, it suits in with modern life. Mm -hmm. You can move it around if you've got children, um, and it's relatively well. There's no pendulum, so you can put it on any surface. Okay. And that's a good start. And then you can start researching back from that. And then you can start looking at it. And you can move it around different rooms. Because I find, you know, I, yeah. obviously I'm learning a little bit more about clocks over the years. Yes. But when I first started, though, you'd get a carriage clock sell for thirty pounds, and then suddenly yes. a carriage clock would come in. I'd put it in at fifty to eighty pounds, and it makes six, seven hundred pounds. And I, oh, yes. then I, that's how I learned because you, you yeah. obviously we've got experts yeah. now that. We, but when I first started off, yeah. when I didn't know anything about clocks, yeah. that that would that would have that would surprise me when we had a flyer because two people would look at it and. We had a t we had a TV show actually that I can't remember what it was. It was it wasn't like Flog It or something like. But it was a TV show came in. Their expert wasn't there, and they had a clock, and it yeah. was a, a bulwark clock. Yes, I think it was a bulwark with tortoise shell in, yes. in bad disrepair and yeah. everything else. And we put it in at I think one to two hundred pounds. Yes, they did a whole film thing on it saying one to two hundred pounds. But then we had three buyers come in. I think they yeah. were collectors, and it went for something like eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred pounds. Yes. They wanted to reshoot. We wouldn't let them reshoot because they had to be truthful, you know. I, yeah, I like yeah. it to be truthful and stuff. And, but things like that, yeah, you just don't. Well, Frederick Boole, who's first um, perfected that ma that manufacture of the insert in brass into tortoise shell, it's actually turtle. Turtle, yes, is what it really yeah, is. Yeah. And it was the great big turtles, and they float it on hot water, and it comes off in sheets, and that's how you can bend it over the shape of the case. Obviously, an endangered species now, but yeah, oh. I think from 1941 or 42, I think anything anything before that is fine because it was yeah. there were enough around there. But now, obviously, yeah. it's an endangered species. You know, if you think if you see anything new, then keep away from it. But mind you, they do well, fake, they do fake faux bull. Right? They do indeed do faux bull work. Yes, uh, especially the stuff made sort of 1880 onwards, because it was actually too expensive, I guess. But that institute of bull is still there in Paris. You can go there, and they teach youngsters even today. I've been there. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean they do a lot of acrylic work and stuff, but it is all about veneering and furniture manufacturing. It's fantastic. You had John Blyan actually talking about, and Lennox Cato came in the other day. Yeah. And he talked about veneers from the 16th century, just yes. showing us it's fascinating. And you would yes. never know. You just look at it and think, "Oh, that's pretty," yeah. but the workmanship that goes into these things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It. It is. Yeah. Did and that's what's lovely about that's what's lovely about sort of antiques masterclass really because everybody you've come in with your expertise yeah. and people have learned you know we've come in a small sphere on something that's really beautiful and they're learning about are there any good resources you can recommend for sort of that for people that are interested in clocks so if they are interested now and they've they've what they've watched you yes where where should they there are two or three places in london where we are now uh, one of them is um in the guild hall museum where the worshipful company of clockmakers have got their collection and it's free, you can go there. You've got an incredible collection of the finest quality English clocks. Okay. Very fine. The British Museum, got a lovely department in there. Again, very, very fine. Um, but for French clocks, the best place to go would be the Wallace Collection, just north of Oxford Street. Okay. Incredible collection of the, of the best quality. Okay. Yeah. That free as well? Yes, okay. yeah, it's free, yeah. yeah. But so we, we're very poorly off for German clocks. Um, is there a reason for that? In England. I don't know. I don't know, but we, we do, there's not many of them about. Yeah. I mean, the Germans are very appreciative of them. They'd probably take them all back home again. Because we've got like black, we got like black forest clocks, which, you know, yes. we've had a few come yes. through my sale rooms and stuff, and there's a lot of collectors for black forest clocks. Yeah, who are those people? Well, we've said that on the internet mainly, although, you know, but we've had a few. Yeah. But well, no, no accounting for taste. Well, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Robert, um, for coming in and explaining a little bit more about, well, this beautiful clock and uh, telling us a little bit more about Empire Clocks and the clock market as a whole. Is, is there anything you'd like to add before you finish that you could tell the viewer if they're looking at buying or selling or watching out for fakes? I mean, the fakes, obviously, we've 
you can tell by looking at the underneath if they've been electroplated. So yes. if it's been electroplated, you know, it, it will be covered. It's a great tip on that. So the screws are all handmade as well. So you can yes, look, so all are. the screws will be different. Yeah. Just a little simple point. They're very simple if you know, but if you don't yeah. know, then... Well, one of the things I would say is, um, if we just have a look at the inside. There. In there, I call that the plate, the two plates that hold all the wheels together. Mm -hmm. If you just literally can rub your finger on that plate and see how thick it is. If it's thick, it's good. If it's thin, it's poor. Okay. And that goes with any clock. And the cheaper the clock, the more pressed out they are. Because you can't press out thick plates. Okay. You can't fake it. That's one of the, the things about clocks. Um, and another another yeah. problem another problem if you do have a really nice clock yes. is, is if you're going to transport it. I mean, obviously, for a clock like this, yes. you just stick it in the back of the car or whatever. It it's going to it's going to get damaged. I mean, yes, it will. Um, I th several dealers do do this, but I actually every clock I ever sell, it comes in its own individually made packing box, okay. and that's lined inside. Freight is quite difficult, but if it's properly prepared, you can and I do export them all over the world. Okay, so it's not too bad, but. Don't risk it in the back of the car. It will fall over. Well, just for the viewers, I hope yeah. you don't get flooded. Remind us what your website's called again? Uh, the London Clockmaker. The London Cl Clockmaker. Dot co. Dot UK. Yes. So if you've got any questions, um, any tipsters, Robert will reply and um, eventually. Eventually, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'd just like to say, Robert, thank you so much for coming in. It's been fascinating. And um, there's a close-up of the... There's the close-up of the inside, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So each... And there we are. This yeah. is, shows a lot better there. Yeah. yeah. And but each of the... I mean, that screw was actually made on a lathe. The thread was cut. The head was cut. And then it was heat polished, and then heat treated, and then blued with a heat treatment. And then plunged into oil. And that gives it a, 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 some resistance uh, to rust. Yeah. It just looks... It just looks... Yeah, this one is what we call a silk suspension. The pendulum is hung off of silk rather than a steel spring. Because normally it's like that, isn't it? And it, it's just hung yeah, like that. So. It can be, yeah. Uh, but and that also shows up that it was made before about 1820. Okay. As another one of the indicators. What, 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 why is that? Just... Well, they stopped doing it because the silk used to rot. Okay. And the steel was more reliable. Right, okay. But to be honest, good quality silk thread. I mean, they last for years. I mean, I always replace them when I clean them. Of course. But it's um, yeah. all good stuff. All right, Robert. Well, but thank you very much. No, for thank you me so today. much for it's coming. Been great. Yeah, it's really fascinating, and I yeah. really, I, I, hopefully, you'll come in and talk about a different type of clock, maybe some long case or something like that. I'll, yeah. um, I'll try and pull you in on that, yeah. ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for watching Robert talking about Empire Clocks and Antiques Masterclass. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.